Chapter 5 Beams for Bending Homework Solutions Homework 5.1 For the beam, as illustrated, please draw the shear and the bending moment diagrams and determine the equations of the shear and bending moment curves. So what do we have? We have a DE prismatic beam. Prismatic beam and there is a cantilever. Prismatic means it has a uniform cross section throughout the lens of the beam. It, it is so called a cantilever, which means it is fixed at the D end and the E end is hanging free. And this beam is experienced uniformly distributed load W. What we draw here is uh, uniformly distributed load W. Okay. And the W typically has a unit of a newton per meter. And based on the loading situation, we want you to draw the so-called shear and the bending moment diagram, the V and M diagrams, and also determine the analytical equation of the shear and bending moment curves. Of course, here we only have W and L these type of symbols, but we can still get a equations using these W, L, okay? So to do that, we first need to get the FBD, our free body diagram for the entire DE beam. The free body diagram for the entire DE beam. This is DE beam. We have on the top in blue, the uniformly distributed load W, okay? W in the unit often of Newton per meter. And then at the D end, at the D end, we need a reaction force. Reaction force. We call it R D. We call it R D. Reaction force to counteract with the distributed force W. Uh, at the same time, we also need a reaction moment M D at the D end. We also need an internal reaction moment, MD, at the D end, okay? So from balance of force point of view, consider the, let's say, horizontal axis is from D to the right, and the vertical axis is from D to the up. So the, consider the balance force in the Y direction, we will have all the force going up, which is RD. The reaction forces, no other addition, no other forces, and then that would be balanced out by the total downward force, which is W, um, which has a unit of newton per meter or pound of force per inch, divided by and uh, times L. Okay, so R D is the reaction force at D side equals to the total downward force, which is W times the total length L. And then for the balance moment, balance moment and we chose uh, also D point as our axis. For the balance moment, MD, sigma MD, the total balance moment around M, uh, on D point is zero, so we would get MD. The reaction moment at the D point, and so what we draw uh, counterclockwise um, equals to the total moment that is trying to rotate the beam clockwise, and that will be W L times half L. Okay, W L gives the total force, but the, the equivalent distance is half of L away from the D point, so it's 0.5 W L. Okay, so with RD reaction force at D and MD reaction moment and D, we can draw the FBD, the free body diagram for any arbitrary section, DF, any arbitrary section from left and D. Okay, and again, let's consider the balance force in the Y direction. We will have RD, the force going up. Okay. Uh, equals to the Wx, the force going downward, 
okay, to counteract the RD effect, and as if we draw V, the internal shear or internal shearing force, okay, as a result, the V, the internal shear would be RD minus WX, okay. Rd minus Wx, and what is Rd? Rd is Wl, so the uh, shearing force would be Wl minus Wx, okay? That's what we um, obtained from statics point of view. Similarly, for the total bending of moment around F point, uh, we would have around the the f point which is the arbitrary section that we are cutting okay uh, we would have rd times x rd times x trying to rotate this small section clockwise uh, and uh, the other terms are all counterclockwise m the internal bending moment m is trying to rotate this small section df counterclockwise and uh, MD around Y is also uh, counterclockwise, that's the reaction moment. And finally, this, um, this force WX times half of X, because the equivalent force would be in fact acting here, times half X, that gives us a total um, internal moment of m so rdx minus all that equals zero as a result internal bending moment m would be if we move this to the other side rdx minus rd minus 0.5 wx square okay and then you get the equation you get uh, from that equation you can get the answer and uh, uh, I omit them for your own benefit but uh, in the end we, if we plot the shear diagram it would be a linear curve starting with the highest the WL at uh, the left end and going towards zero at the E end okay you can imagine I mean you cut very close to E the downward force um, you try to rotate it one way while the other force will try to rotate it the other way but they both should be very very small okay on the other hand at the left end it will reach the maximum value of WL similarly for bending moment diagram we said the relationship between shear diagram and bending moment diagram is that the local slope for the moment diagram would be the local shear. So at uh, L point, the slope is almost zero, which the shear should be zero. At uh, the other end, you have the highest positive value for shear, which means locally it has the most uh, um, highest slope at this side in absolute value. Okay. Homework 5.2. Uh, for the beam, as illustrated, it's a simply supported beam. Okay. Um, e side uh, on a hinge, uh, D side on a roller. Please draw the shear and bending moment diagrams. V diagram and M diagram, shear and bending moment diagram, and determine the equations of the shear and bending moment curve. Okay, so it's a very simple scenario, simply supported beam with a, a concentrated load P at a distance A from D side and at a distance L minus A from the E side. And the total length, of course, would be A plus L minus A would be L. Okay. So it's a generalized situation. So to get the bending shear diagram and bending moment diagram, first we have to go back to statics and determine the so-called reaction forces. So for the DE beam or DFE beam, assume 
we didn't draw it, assume there are reaction, vertical reactions at the D and at E, both pointing upward. Assume that we have reactions RD at D point pointing upward, RE at E point pointing upward. That will not be moment because of the hinge and the roller connection. So from balance of force along the y direction, we get P going downward equals to RD plus RE. Remember, we just said assuming the reaction at the D and the reaction at the E are both upward. So downward balanced by upward. That's our first equation. And then from balance of moment point of view, sigma MD indicate the balance of moment around the D point, around D point. From that, sigma MD equals zero, which means, okay, if we take D as our axis, P times A, P times A will be the moment trying to rotate the beam. P times A, if we use D as our axis, P times A will be the moment to try to rotate the beam uh, clockwise, clockwise P times A. Okay, and then uh, RE, because we said it assume it's upward, RE goes the other way. RE times the entire distance from D to E, which is L, RE times L would be the moment that tries to rotate the entire beam um, counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Okay? So clockwise balanced by counterclockwise. From here, we would get the second equation, PA equals RE o times L. We get RE, the reaction force at uh, E point would be just a PA, P times A over L. Okay, and uh, we are assuming this RE goes upward, and as a result, RD would be just a P minus RE. P minus RE would just be P L over L is just P minus P A over L. Okay, so we get the two reaction forces. One is RE, one is RD. And if you want to check, you add RE and RD up together. P A over L, P minus A over L cancel each other. You get RD plus RE equals P times L over L, which is just P. That's what we um, get at the beginning. Okay. So now we know the reaction forces. Let's now start to try to get the shear and bending moment diagram. So between D and F point, between D and F point, all X in the range of from 0 to A, okay? All X, 0 is smaller than X, smaller than A. Then still, let's, here I draw the free body diagram for an arbitrary, from D to an arbitrary cross section to the left of P, so DC. So at uh, D side reaction, reaction force RD going upward, and previously we know what the value for RD is. And then we have V at the arbitrary cross section that we cut, and uh, from that's the internal shearing force. And meanwhile, there should be a, at, when we make the arbitrary cut, there should be a internal bending moment. Otherwise, this V and RD will try to rotate the beam. And this M has to counteract it. Okay. So from balance of force in the Y direction, in the vertical Y direction, you would get V going downward is balanced by RD. And RD we got from earlier. RD goes upward. And from earlier, it's P times uh, L minus A divided by L, okay? So we get the shear uh, for, shearing force or shear uh, magnitude and uh, V, because L is greater than A, um, V would be positive. And remember we said the sign convention, if the shear is positive, it would be trying to rotate the arbitrary section from D to C clockwise. We said if the she shearing V is trying to 
uh, on the right hand side try to rotate it uh, clockwise we said that shear is positive okay on the other hand for balance of moment around m if we make this arbitrary cut we get this free body diagram and if we consider the balance of moment around d so m would be trying to rotate the beam dc short beam counterclockwise okay and uh, that effect has to be balanced by v trying to rotate this dc uh, section clockwise we are not going to consider rd here because we are considering the balance moment for uh, at d point okay so rd term doesn't come into play so this gives us x uh, m equals to vx more uh, sharing force times the distance and the, this one is trying to rotate the dc section clockwise okay and uh, v v we said is p times l a o over l and the times x and this is what we are going to get okay and because similarly because l is greater than a uh, m this internal moment would be positive okay which means within df section the internal moment will try to bend the beam concave up or ends up or ends up okay similarly on the other side of the concentrated load and between f and e all in a the the x is in the range from zero all the way to here and l should be uh, x should be greater than a but smaller than a. okay so said if we continue we make an arbitrary cut here we consider from d to that point or d to c that point okay and uh, from d to c that point let's first consider the uh, balance of force again the same thing sigma fy equals zero here we draw the free body diagram from here to arbitrary section if we said uh, c cut from here on the d end we have rd direction force from the support here at uh, f point we have the concentrated load and then at the free end that where we make the cut we have the internal shear force as well as internal bending moment for sign convention we just write the shearing force as downward while the moment as um, counterclockwise so between if uh, the cut is between f and the e we would have the balance of force which is rd is going up and uh, p is going down and v is going down as a result v would be rd whatever goes up minus p and rd we already know from here p l a minus l minus p and because this l and l cancel out we would get the um result of v would just be this p l l um, p minus p equal so we get rid of minus p a over l that gives us the internal shear if the cut is between f and e uh, and because p a l are all negative the applied load the distance and the total length are all positive it means v the internal shear would be negative internal shear would be negative we look from the dc section the which means the actual actual in shearing force should be go upward that's one and uh, it is trying to rotate the dc section uh counterclockwise and that's why we call it uh, negative finally for md section for moment around d finally for moment around d again we have to 
um, set it to be zero. The summation of all the moment around D should be zero. So M, of course, is the first term. It tries to rotate the D C part if we draw counterclockwise. And then if we are considering around the D, our D term goes, and then we have the V term, and it's at a distance x from the axis, so x times v as part of the moment uh, to resist uh, the uh, to resist uh, the overall moment internal uh, bending moment for DC section. So v x times around d, the p is also trying to rotate it into. Uh, uh, M goes this way, uh, Vx trying to go clockwise, and P is also trying to rotate the beam clockwise. So as a result, Vx would be minus Pa over L times X, and we write it here, plus Pa, uh, P times A. That will be the this the moment contribution from the concentrated load P at a distance A away from the uh, from the axis. So in this case, uh, P A, because X is normally uh, zero or smaller than L, as a result, the M would be positive. It will try to positive try to bend the DC section concave up or both ends up, which means C would go higher. Okay. So again, this is our simply supported beam. Uh, concentrated load at distance A from the left end D, and the coordinates are chosen here. X goes horizontally, Y goes vertically. The, the origin is chosen as D point. Okay. So to get the shear. And the moment diagram, shear force, and we first uh, compile the result for shear force and for bending moment. So if within DF section, within DF section, our x from 0 all the way to A, uh, from previously we said its internal shear would be P times L minus A over L. P times L minus A over L. Uh, and it would be a constant uh, value, independent of where we made the. Uh, it's a independent where we make the location or cut, and at the same time, the internal moment for this part from previous one would be p times l minus a times x over l. Okay. And it will also be positive with a constant slope of P times L minus A divided by L. Okay, and that gives us the straight line. And uh, when X equals to A, when X equals to A, we would have something like this, this relationship. Uh, finally, if our locations between from between F and E, we make arbitrary cut cut and the distance would be from A to L, from A to L. And so what we said before, the sh internal shear would be minus P A over L. The minus P A over L. Why it is minus? Because we said earlier it is trying to rotate the arbitrary section DFC in the opposite direction, it's trying to rotate the concave down. Uh, so trying to rotate it um, counterclockwise, okay? And similarly, M, uh, internal bending moment would be actually it, uh, the first derivative M would be the V. So you can check it is the case. And M is essentially V times X, okay? And it's trying to rotate the um, beam instead of clockwise counterclockwise and based on this equation let's think v of course is a positive 
for here, V of course is a negative value, constant value for the other part. Okay, and M, it has a linear slope of P L minus A divided by L. And uh, when X equals zero, M is zero. When X equals to A, we reach the maximum. Okay, on the other hand, for the other side, uh, within F to E, V is also a constant based on what we analyzed, while M, internal bending moment, would be the, um, again, M's derivative with respect to X is, my, is V, and we verified that, and when X equals to L, when X equals to L, L and L would cancel out, minus PA plus PA, we would get zero moment. Okay. Homework 5.3. For the beam and the loading situation as illustrated, please first draw the shear and bending moment diagram. Okay. We have a simply supported beam, uh, left side hinge connection, um, right side hinge connection, left side uh, at F, we have roller. And then we have distributed load from D to F and the concentrated load at the G. And uh, from D to F is one meter, from F to G is one meter, from G to E is one meter. Okay, we know the geometry uh, for the overall beam and we want to draw the sh and the loading situation. We want to draw the shear and bending moment diagram. And uh, we also want to calculate the maximum normal stress at maximum normal stress due to the loading on um, at uh, F cross section, at the F normal cross section. If we know it's a prismatic beam and it's a square cross section with base and H, the same value of 10 centimeter, the same value of 10 centimeter, okay? So this is our problem. Uh, for this entire DFGE beam, um, we first have to go back to statics and uh, assume reactions at uh, F and E are both pointing upward. It's simple because the distributed load and the centric load are going down, and the roller, of course, it has to go up and uh, go assume the reactions uh, at F and RE at E are both pointing upward. So Summation of the force along the vertical y-axis, along the vertical y-axis gives us the WL. What is W? W is 2,000 um, Newton per meter. WL, L is the distance from D to F, or the same F to G, or G to E. Initially, I'm using symbols. WL plus P, P is our concentrated load, and in this case, it would be 10,000. Okay, WL times P are the two forces going downward would be equal to the total summation of force of the going upward, RF plus RE. Again, we are assuming the reaction force at F and uh, at E are pointing upward. Okay, this is our first equation. One equation, two unknown, RF and RE. We know P, we know W. We know P is 10,000 Newton. W is 2,000 Newton per meter, L we said is 1 meter, okay? The second uh, equation we're going to use would be here. And the balance of moment around the F point, F axis, would be zero, okay? So we are using F as our, F point as our axis. So um, WL gives the dis total distributed force times point the 5L, that would be the moment caused by this distributed load. And it's trying to rotate the beam around F counterclockwise, counterclockwise. Okay. And then the force, the reaction force at F, uh, it would be neglected since it goes through our um, axis at F. Then the other reaction force at E, we said it's going upward, or you assume it's going upward. As a result, around F, it, the RE is also trying to rotate the beam on counterclockwise. So RE times 2L. Why 2L? Because L is from D to F, or from F to G, or to, to G to 
e. So from f to e would be two times of the distance or two l. These two are the moment that's trying to rotate the beam counterclockwise, and it should be equal to the moment that tries to rotate the beam clockwise. Uh, p is our concentrated load, ten thousand newton and the times l the distance from f to g and we said it's also l or one meter okay so from uh from these we can two we have two equations one is for force one is for moment and we have two variable rf and re and from here we can uh solve for re and rf for example re what I see here would be everywhere divided by L and divided by 2, which is half P minus uh, this term divided by half and L, and divided by 2 and then divided by L, which is 0.25L. And then you plug the number in. We said P is 10,000, half P would be 500 times uh, 0.25 times uh, 2,000. And L is one meter, so neglect. 0.25 times 2,000, it will be 500 Newton. And 5,000 minus 500, it will be 4,500 Newton. That will be the reaction force at uh, E point. Then, using the first equation, Rf would be WL plus P minus RE, and WL my minus e minus we said our e would be 0.5 p minus 0.25 wl and you simplify it would be 1.25 wl plus 0.5 p and uh, uh, w we said is 2000 L is 1, so 2000 times 1 times 1.25, that will be 2500 uh, Newton plus 0.5 P. P is 10,000 Newton, 0.5 P would be 5,000 Newton. So overall, it would be 7,500 Newton, also going upward. Okay, that's RF. So now we know RF and RE. The based on statics, the, the two equation. Then let's consider our uh, shear and bending moment diagram. We are going to do the same thing as before, cut, uh, s do it in a section way. Within DF, within DF, or you make an arbitrary cut between D and F, or the X distance from, if I'm using the D as my origin, uh, X distance from zero to one before F. Okay, and uh, we draw the uh, free body diagram for that arbitrary section from D to C. You make the arbitrary section, so on the top we have distribute load, and this section length is X, and at where we cut, we would have the internal shear reinforce V, okay? And by following convention, we draw V going downward, and then at the section that we cut at C sec at the normal section at C we cut we would also have an internal bending moment and by some convention we draw it uh, uh, like this to try to as if it's trying to make the DC beam bend the concave up or in up. okay so then, for this small section from DC, the total balance force in the y direction or in the vertical direction would be W times X, total downward force plus distributed force plus V equals to zero. As a result, V, the internal shear, would be minus WX, which we would get minus 2000X Newton. Again, we said that W is 2000. Uh, 2000 x newton and the v here is we have a negative sign means um it is opposite to what we are drawing here it will be in reality going upward and it will try to rotate the dc section counterclockwise which is 
uh, opposite to our sign convention. Okay. Then, uh, similarly for this DC section, let's consider the balance of moment. Let's consider balance moment specifically for around the C. For around C, we would have the distributed load times uh, x give us a total force times half x give us the uh, moment trying to rotate the DC section. If we look at around C um, counterclockwise and uh, V is going through C, so that term is omitted, and M is also trying to um, rotate the beam counterclockwise. As a result, we would have 0.5 Wx plus M equals to zero, and M would be, as we see, point minus 0.5 Wx square. And you plug the number in, W is 2000. Uh, my, Minus 0.5 times 2000 is minus 1000 x square, uh, still in the unit of Newton meter. And x would be in the unit. And here, the m is also negative, which means in reality, the moment is trying to bend the DC section concave down of both ends down. Both ends down. Okay? Then we finish the df. Let's continue a little bit from f to g or x, x from here to arbitrary cut where we make x is in the range from 1 to 2. It's greater than 1 and smaller than 2. Again, we draw the free body diagram for this section and that now includes f point, dfc. Okay, uh, from D to F, we have distributed load still at 2000 Newton per meter. And then at, uh, at the F point, we have the RF, we said it's going upward and it has a magnitude 7500 Newton. We'll make the arbitrary cut. Let's follow sign convention. We have internal shear V as well as the internal bending moment M. V is trying to rotate the beam. Uh, clockwise M is trying to rotate the beam section counterclockwise. So uh, for balance of force along Y direction, we will have W times L. W times L going downward plus V also going downward equals to RF. RF we said is going upward from previous uh, solution. As a result, the internal shear internal shear would be rf minus wr rf we said is uh 7500 newton minus wl w is 2000 newton per meter times um l l is one meter so it's just the minus 2000 it will be uh 7500 minus 2000 will be 5500 newton that's the internal shear uh, if the location is between f to g similarly uh, of course this v we got is a positive number it means it this internal shear is trying to rotate this dfc section dfc section clockwise Similarly, when we consider the DFC section, we have to also consider balance moment around F. Balance of moment around F. And then W times L it would be the total distributed load and it's at a distance of 0.5 L, uh, a half meter, trying to rotate the DFC counterclockwise. And similarly, M is also trying to rotate the uh, beam counterclockwise. So I put these two terms on left hand side. On the other hand, the V term, the sh internal shearing force will try to rotate the beam around the F clockwise. And the, the arm's length would be X minus this one meter or L. Okay. And the, based on this, we would get 
I'm rearranged V times parenthesis x minus L minus 0.5 WL square. Okay, and then V we said is 5500. We write it down here x minus L is 1, x minus 1, and minus 0.5. W, W, we said is 2,000.5, W is 1,000 times L square, L square is 1 meter square and uh, uh, 1, so it got neglected. Overall, the M, if we simplify, it would be 5,500X minus 5,500 minus 1,000 would be minus 6,500. And because it's moment, it should have the unit of uh, Newton times meter. Okay? Then for the last section from G to E, for the last section from G to E, or x in the distance from 2, 1 plus 1, 2 meter, to 1 plus 1 plus 1 to 3 meter. Okay? So again, we also draw the free body diagram from D to F to G to C. And from D to F, we have distributed load the two thousand newton per meter and at the g we have concentrated load and uh, 10 kilonewton and at the arbitrary section that we cut we would have a uh, shearing force internal shearing force v as well as inter internal bending moment f okay and uh, don't forget because it also has f don't forget the rf reaction force at f pointing upward okay so for all this let's consider balance force uh, w l is trying it's going downward and uh, the v internal shear is going downward as well as pg 10,000 newton is also going downward add them up together should be the force that is going upward which is 7,500 newton going upward okay as a result you can see v term would be rf we keep minus pg minus wl rf we said is 7500 newton pg we said is 10000 newton and the wl would be 2000 newton meter times 1 meter would be 2000 newton so we if we simplify uh 7 1500 minus uh, 10,000, it will be minus 2,500 Newton minus 2,000 Newton, would be minus 4,500 Newton. Okay, so we got a constant uh, negative value here. And uh, V, as you see, V, as you see, the internal shearing force is negative. It is negative, which means it is trying to rotate the d e or d c bar because it's negative it's trying to rotate it uh, counterclockwise counterclockwise finally for balance of moment for balance of moment again around f again around f we still have the half w l square term half w l would be the total equivalent force and it's at a distance half of L, which is 0.5 meter. And uh, it is trying to rotate this DFGC beam around uh, F uh, counterclockwise. And then similarly, M term is also trying to uh, rotate the beam counterclockwise. So we add them up uh, together and uh, for the force at f because we are doing balance moment around f that term rf it goes and then 10,000 newton this is original our uh, pg term it's trying to rotate the beam clockwise okay and that's pg and times L and finally the V times the distance from here to here which is X 
minus initial distance, which is L. Okay, V times X and L. And you simplify, you would get uh, M equals M equals uh, this equation, and if we simplify, it will be minus 4500x plus uh, 13500 newton. Okay? So, how did we get here? How did we get here? We said uh, V is minus 4500 newton. So, uh, Vx would be minus 4,500x and uh, minus L, L we said is 1, okay, plus uh, PGL, PG is 10,000 newton, L times 1 with 1,000 minus uh, 0.5 WL square, L equals 1, W would be 2,000, 2,000 times 0.1 would be 1,000, so you get this result, okay? Then let's plot it up. So we know the internal shear force for each of the three sections. We also know the internal bending moment for each of the three sections for the analytical uh, solution. Then we can plot it up. Uh, when for shearing force from 0 to 1 or from D to F, it is a negative going from 0 all the way to minus 2000 linearly. And then um, between F and G, it, the internal shear will suddenly go up, and this distance would be the R, uh, um, the distance from here to here would be just the, the RF 7500, and then it is a constant value of 5500. And the after G, after G, It goes the other way because of this downward force and it becomes constant shear again, minus 4,500, okay? Similarly, based on shear diagram, we can get the bending moment diagram. From 0 to 1, we have the internal bending moment minus 1,000 x squared, okay? When x equals 0, we are at 0. When x equals 1, we are at max, absolute maximum, okay, which is minus 1,000 uh, newton meter. And then from 1 to 2, and from 2 to 3, from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. These are just the linear equations that we got before. And uh, we want, if you want to check the continuity, you can. When x equals one from this equation, it will be minus one thousand. When x equals one for the middle equation, it is also uh, minus one thousand. And this kind of like give us confidence for the result. Finally, at the point F, we have the moment diagram from previously. At the moment F. The maximum norm, axial normal stress would be MC over I, MC over I. And uh, because it's a square cross section, C would be half of H, and I would be 1 over 12 BH to the power of cube. And of course, we can simplify 12 goes to the numerator, 12 times uh, 1 over half becomes 6, and H and H cancel, 6MF over BH square. And mx, sigma mx, if you plug the number in, 6 times mf, at f point, it is, uh, if we're going to use at absolute value, it will be 1000 uh, uh, newton meter divided by bh uh, to the power of 2. b, we said it's uh, 100 millimeter upon 1 meter, and uh, h, it is also 0.1 meter uh, bh squared to the power of 2. And you simply plug in the number, you can get this value. Maximum stress is 6 times um, 10 to the power of 6 or 6 megapascal. Okay? 
Finally, homework 5.4 for the beam, prismatic beam, D, F, E shown as a loading, uniformly distributed load, 2,000 Newton per meter, okay? And the beam is simply supported, the hinge connection at E and on a roller at F. We want you to design the width, the width of the beam. Assuming it's a rectangular cross section, we want to design the width of the beam if you know the material used has a allowable stress of 10 megapascal or 10 megapascal. And if you know the beam height H is already known, it's 10 centimeter. Okay. So for this one, the first step is very similar to previous. Um, it would be to get the reaction forces at F and at E. And like before, let's assume the reaction forces at F and at E are both pointing upward, which means RF going upward, RE going upward. So for the balance of force in the vertical Y direction, total downward force would be 2000 times the total length 1 meter, 2 meter totally 3 meter, 2000 newton per meter times 3 meter. That is total downward force have to be balanced by total upward force, Rf plus Re, okay? Then let's also consider balance of moment. And you can take any point, and I chose E point, balance moment around E point, okay? So this 2000 uh, newton per meter times 3 meter and the effect distance for this equivalent force would be half of the total length, which is 1.5 meter, trying to rotate the beam counterclockwise, and it has to be balanced by the force RF pointing upward at a distance 2 meter away, trying to rotate the beam clockwise, okay? Of course, the force RE is neglected because I'm considering balance of moment around the E point. And from the second equation, if we divided both sides by 2 meter, we would get Rf equals to 2 meter, 1000 times 3 times 1.5, it would be um, 4500 newton. And then, once we know Rf is 4500 newton, from the first equation, um, 6,000 Newton equals to Rf plus Re, and Re would be 6,000 Newton minus Rf of 4,500 Newton, which is 1,500 Newton. Now we know the reaction forces at F and at E and that direction. Now let's do the same thing as what we have before. For arbitrary lens X from 0 to 1 meter, our DC section, C is between D and F. Let's uh, draw the free body diagram. We have the uniformly distributed uh, load uh, on the top at arbitrary cross section that we chose to cut. We have the internal shearing force V, and we use sign convention, draw it uh, downward, trying to rotate the this beam section clockwise, and at that cross section, that's also the internal bending moment M, and uh, for sign convention, let's assume it is trying to bend the beam concave up or ends up, okay? So like before, we write balance of force for the Y direction, so 2,000 Newton times this length, which is X plus downward force, downward force plus V equals to zero. And as a result, we get V equals to minus 2000 X uh, in the unit of Newton, of course. And this minus sign indicates in reality, the internal shearing force is uh, going instead of down, but going up. And instead of trying to rotate this DC section clockwise is actually trying to rotate the DC section counterclockwise. Okay. Uh, and also, let's consider balance of moment, internal um, moment M. You can choose 
at any point and I choose C point as our axis. So 2000 times X, that's the equivalent force times half X that is the moment trying to rotate this DC section counterclockwise plus M equals to zero. Okay, and M of course would be a negative 0.5 times 2000 is negative 1000 X X X square and m would be in the unit of newton meter okay again the negative sign indicates in reality it is not bending the dc section concave up but concave down or in down okay that is for the situation when x is from d to f or from zero to one meter then from f to e from f to e or our arbitrary lens x is from two meter one meter to three meter, we can still draw the free body diagram uniformly distribute load at the top at the arbitrary intersection that we chose that will be internal shearing force V down and internal bending moment M can trying to bend it concave up. But then at F point, because now we are longer than DF, at F point there will be reaction force 4500 Newton pointing upward so the total balance of force would be 2000 newton times x going down plus v equals to this upward force rf of 4500 newton and as a result the v would be 4500 newton minus 2000 x okay and for balance of moment balance of moment i still chose the other end of C end as my axis. So 2000 times X times half X is trying to rotate the uh, beam section counterclockwise. M is also trying to rotate the beam section counterclockwise. So V is neglected because C we chose C as our axis. So counterclockwise balanced by clockwise, which is 4500 times the distance from here to here, which is X minus the distance here which is one and uh, as a result m would be equal to this term goes to the right side which is 0.5 times 2000 is 1000 and of course we have a negative sign x x square and plus 4500 x minus 4500 okay so we got the analytical e expression for uh, internal bending moment um, at each section from D to F and uh, from F to E. Okay. From previous slide, we got for this um, prismatic beam with such loading, we got the bending moment, internal bending moment at each of the section, zero to one or from D to F one two three or from f to e and then we can plot it up and that's what we got the so-called bending moment diagram okay and then to get some maximum sh uh, normal stress we need the maximum moment and uh, we know for from zero to one the maximum is happening at one and that value is minus one thousand newton meter but for this part we don't know so we have to um for the analytical equation takes the first derivative to get uh to make the first derivative to be zero we get the horizontal when x equals 2.25 meter and with that we can get the moment for positive moment which is 562.5 newton meter so overall the maximum moment that can be obtained achieved would be at f point and the absolute value would be 1000 newton meter okay so when we consider maximum allowable stress sigma max would be mc over i m we are going to choose instead of this point uh, we are going to choose at f point and uh, c over i we can simplify C is half H, I is 1 over 12 BH to the power of cube. So sigma max would be 12 goes to the top, 6M over BH square, H and H cancel. So this whole thing has to be smaller than our allowable stress, which is uh, 
10 megapascal. As a result, our B value, our width, has to be greater than 6m divided by allowable stress divided by h square. And if we plug the number in m, we said at f point is 1000 newton meter, we take the absolute value. Allowable stress is 10 mega, 10 to the power of 6 pascal. And h, we said, is 10 centimeter or 0.1 meter, and take square. You plug the number in, you would get the minimum width in meter or in centimeter. Okay?